What's up everyone, it's Evan Morgan, and today I'm gonna to be walking you through how I've been holding up through self-quarantining and this crazy apocalypse that we're in today. Behind me, we've got Archer and Lana, who are playing profusely. One of the first things I like to do in the morning when I get up is feed the dogs, otherwise they continue to be crazy throughout the entire day, which they inevitably do anyway. So I got this coffee from a friend's show. It is called Unincorporated Coffee Roasters. It's got the little mustache with the X's. Seems like it's gotta be strong stuff, right? So now anyone familiar with the French press, you have to wait four minutes till the coffee's ready to serve. In that time, I'm gonna catch you guys up on what I've been doing the last couple days and give you a little tour. Here we go. So we'll start off in the back of the home. Right here, we've got a minimalist workout area with a workout ball, a little T-core, a roller, a mat, as well as some resistance bands. And we've got this antique artsy mirror over here so you can look at yourself while you work out too. Over here, I've got the charging station, some quasar tubes. I've got Sir Archer up on the bed right now. Hey, Lana. Hey, girl. How are you? Oh, you're a cute girl. Hey, Archie. Yep, he loves the camera, don't you, Archer? I've got a fireplace set up here. Been staying warm the last couple of nights and filming some interesting time-lapse setups with the GoPro with the Edelkrone motorized dolly, which has been a lot of fun to play with. I've got that set up up here, the desktop, so I can stay productive editing because I've been filming and shooting every day, whether that's shooting some B-roll videos, doing some nice macro photography of a model, which was a beautiful spider on a leaf the other day, or a bee on a flower, or the dogs just playing candidly. So I think that's something very important is just because it's a quarantine doesn't mean that we need to sit and time out and not do anything that's creative or do art and make things in the meantime. I think in situations like this, we are put to the test to stay productive and make the best of what we can out of the situation that's at hand. Mmm, that tastes great. Again, that's unincorporated coffee roasters. I will be providing a link in the description below. But now it is time to officially go out with the dogs and go into the world, take some pictures and videos, and give you a little glimpse of my life in quarantine. So I get asked a lot, what do I've got in my bag? Well, what I've got in here is I got 100 millimeter macro lens, so I could just get some nice close-up shots of objects out there in the wild. And then in here I've got a 200 millimeter L lens on a 6D, which is really nice and sharp lens, good for bird photography or any other animals I might see in the distance. And then I'm gonna be bringing a couple extra batteries, this little small rig, great for the GoPro, just being able to clamp onto a tree branch or a little fence, anything that I run into that could put it into a unique spot. All right, now I'm officially all geared up. I've got the GoPro and Edelkrone on the side. Snap this in nice and snug. Gonna grab the camera, dogs, and we will be on the way. Archer and Lana are ready for an adventure. So it actually is drizzling a little bit out here. It's not too bad, uh -huh. but it still is a little bit wet. So the dogs actually grew up in LA. So right now they are absolutely in heaven as much as possible on earth out here, being able just to run around on the property, enjoy the nice wet grass the clean air, 
and everything it has to offer. So I have the first setup here for the time lapse. I have it set with some nice foreground with the barbed wire fence and a little bit of wood right in front of the lens. And then in the background, we have this beautiful open field. We have a nice mountainside and these just really cotton candy, fluffy like clouds that hopefully are gonna be moving really fast when the time lapse is obviously sped up. So a majority of the image is gonna be taken up from the clouds so we could really get that movement going in the time lapse. And then the bottom third of it or so will be the open field where we'll see the lighting changing from the clouds passing in front of the sun. So the main focus is getting the clouds and then having that bottom third showing the landscape and then right up in front of the lens to have some foreground because then you have foreground, subject matter and background going on and it just works really well for the time lapse, I think. How could you say these guys are not happy? They're like, don't narrate what we're doing, come on. So I know what you're thinking, Evan, how do we get interesting time lapses with a GoPro being that it's not a professional cinema quality camera? Well, there's a lot of ways. Um, it starts with being creative and finding ways that you can make it where the camera is moving through objects, having some sort of reveal, almost like a transition, if you will. So for this setup, what I did is I found a random piece of wood on the floor and I used it to put the Edelkrone on it with the GoPro and I have it faced forward right now. So it's gonna be pushing past these wet blades of grass around it and this barbed wire over it because I found like a hole in the fence. And now the camera's gonna be coming through all that and you'll see the movement's gonna be exaggerated because of the wide angle lens, which is actually something you can use to your advantage with the GoPro. A lot of people knock it and say, oh, this wide angle lens, it doesn't look great. Well, once you start adding movement to a time lapse, that really helps it out exponentially. Another tip I have is, and I've learned this the tough way, is when you're doing a time lapse, you want to set it, at least with the GoPro, to half second intervals, because then you're getting more pictures per minute. And when you look at the grass and the movement from the wind, everything's moving kind of back and forth. When you have longer intervals, like say two seconds, it's gonna have this jitter effect where it's just kind of like and it kind of just, it just takes away from your actual time lapse because it's distracting from the video that you're watching. Archer, shake. Good boy, good boy. Hey, Lana, Lana, sit. Lana, sit. Lana, shake, shake. Good girl. Sometimes you could just have fun with it. Just throw the camera pointing up at the clouds. You're definitely gonna get some movement there. Right now I'm seeing a break in the clouds and seeing already a couple planes fly through it. So I figured might as well just point and shoot. You know, that's what we do. So another one of my highlights of the day is picking up dog poop. Didn't really want to film that part. Thought that that was just too exciting for this fan base. So I'm doing the responsible duty to throw it away like a good citizen that I am. I support cleaning up after your dogs. warned that Lana is incoming taking over this shot um, be warned that once you start doing some macro pictures it's really easy to just spend hours just all over a property and taking pictures of little insects and blades of grass and water droplets and flowers and all that stuff it's a whole different type of photography and it's really easy to just dive in and get 
sucked into it, um, almost like a new video game when people play it and they get addicted to it, that's pretty much the equivalent of a macro lens in photography. So once you get the time lapse you want in the first location before hopping to another spot, there's something you could do to get an additional shot. You just switch the setup. So with the dolly right here, what we did is first we were going from back to front motion, going through the blades of grass under the barbed wire. This next setup, we set it up so we're going from right to left sliding out. That way you get two shots in one spot, maximizing what you can from the first location before hopping to another one. So you guys caught me, that's right. I cheated, I officially cheated. I used the same spot a third time, but I changed the setup drastically and did some set decking, if you will. Um, I took the piece of wood that the GoPro was on top of with the slider and I actually flipped that board up and made this like, it kind of makes us cave through it. So now the GoPro's sliding through that, which is another example of that dynamic movement where the camera's moving as well as the sky and objects around it. So I actually was able to make this completely different setup without having to move the camera to a new place. And this is very effective because sometimes there's just not as many good places to set up. So being able to get a different shot that looks almost like in a different area by using the same spot is actually a really cool way to do that. As I'm saying that, the wind is picking up. Oh. So I'm very thankful to be out here with Archer and Lana to be able to have some extra time to be doing this. I've been wanting to do a vlog for a while, give people a glimpse into my life and thought right now with the pandemic, I can't say I don't have enough time and most of my jobs and gigs have all been put on hold. So I'm just trying to make the best of the situation, get creative, continue to make content, whether that's photography, videography, try something new. And I encourage you all to do the same. Hopefully that's something you get out of this and to value your family, friends, and loved ones and pets. Come on, Archer. Come on, buddy, come here. Hey, buddy. Hey, Lana. Hey, easy now, girl. Easy, easy. So switching up focal length gives you a little bit more of a variety of coverage when doing time lapses. Right now I'm just zoomed in on that mountain in the back with this 200 millimeter. That's a wrap for today. I'm looking forward to cooking some dinner as well as uploading the footage and taking a look at what we've got from today. So a little trick here, I use the little side door to pop open the micro SD card. Even though I have small hands, I still struggle to get that card out of the camera and upload the footage. And after a long day, you can't forget some good old 
it comes out. Some good old hand sanitizer after touching a lot of dirty objects and placing them in and around cameras and before touching food. But you should also wash your hands, 20 seconds. So I use the stuff Nutri-Thrive, which is canine nutritional supplement. Think about it as protein powder for your dog. Not exactly. It is mushrooms and a bunch of other vegetables, what they call Eastern medicine. Here you go, girl. He is hungry. He's had a long day, haven't you, buddy? Over here, buddy. Dogs are fed. Now I can make myself something to eat. Having some potatoes, carrots, adding a secret ingredient, some slivered almonds. Something cool about these eggs is that they're from my cousin-in-law's chicken. So they're not from the grocery store or store-bought or anything like that. They're actually homegrown, if you will. So I'm excited to have them as part of my dinner, having a breakfast for dinner tonight. Your breakfast for dinner isn't quite complete without complimentary orange juice to go with it. The dogs have now been fed. My dinner is ready. Well, breakfast for dinner, that is. The footage is finished transferring. I'm ready to go and have a bite. Take a look at what we filmed today. Thank you for checking out my first vlog. Looking forward to seeing you on my next one. You can follow me at Evan Pro Photo on Instagram, and I'll be ending with some sort of awesome outro. Here we go.